If you are watching this video right now, it's because there are two things on your mind. For one, it's that you need a shave and some sleep. I agree. Number two is the fact that you are after a job because you've been on a coding bootcamp, you're getting no responses to your CV, you really don't know how to get your first step in the industry, then you are in the right place. Now, if you are self-taught or you've gone down a bootcamp and you're now in the process of looking for your first job, or you may be thinking about going on a bootcamp and wondering how to get a job after, then we're gonna discuss that in this video. Now, there are some focus points in this video which we're gonna cover. There's three main focus points. However, before we get to that, what I think you need to concentrate on, which really helps people at the beginning stage of their job interview, especially when they've come out out of the bootcamp is what area of tech you want to go into or what area you want to specialize in. Now that's not to say that that's the area you're going to be in for the rest of your life. It's not like choosing a house in, in Harry Potter, you know, you're not going to be putting Slytherin in and that's it, you can't be a Gryffindor later on. Gryffindor! I don't think it works like that in Harry Potter, but it doesn't work like that in tech. You can switch. I've gone from mobile engineering to software engineering to data engineering to now back in software engineering. It's just about the focus in the beginning is about getting you that first role. After that, you can then obviously, as you gain experience, move about. Now, what do I mean about finding a focus area or deciding on a path? What I mean is this. If you enjoy front end engineering, then that is a good place to start. So all of your CV, all of your job applications should be focused on front end engineering or JavaScript to React jobs. If you prefer back end or if you think that's an area where you'd like to start your career in, then obviously your focus should then be on back end jobs and your CV should, or resume should be tailored for back end keywords. Now, with that in mind, it's important to know straight off the bat that finding your first job is not going to be easy. It's going to take a lot of patience and mental resilience. That is something that I try to teach people. It's not just about sending off the applications. There's a whole process to this. Learning how to adapt to your CV and adapt to the situation is just as important as learning how to code. However, let's get stuck into the video and hopefully get you landed your first job in tech. Also, towards the end, I'll go through my own story to hopefully give you a bit of inspiration, let you know that it can happen and it has happened and it does happen. Now, the first thing I would always get you to do is lean on the bootcamp resources. When I say the bootcamp resources for most software development bootcamps, so if that's in the UK, USA, India, wherever that is, they will have a dedicated recruitment team. And that recruitment team will help you with your CV, interview tips, tactics, and hopefully they will help you with getting interviews as well. Each bootcamp also usually has a dedicated team, which then goes out to meet companies, bring them in to interview the candidates. Now, at this moment, in time that has become increasingly more difficult because as you can imagine with the amount of boot camps on the scene they're all competing for the same attention of all the different companies it is a little bit more difficult so if you can lean on those resources at least for the cv side of things or resume side of things at least to practice your interview techniques and tips and tricks if you can if you can obviously look at some of my resources online make sure you follow the channel because i'm building a whole lot more around so make sure you are using those resources to the maximum because if you paid for the boot camp or even if it's being funded somebody has still paid for you to be there and the bootcamp has a responsibility as part of their commitment to your learning to get you an interview or at least to help you get prepared for interviews and at least to start helping you with your cv etc to make sure it's on the right path so that's the first thing now the second thing is obviously you doing your own research having your own resources and investing in your own learning when it comes to your cv and the quality of it now it may not be a surprise that a lot of the cv reviews that i do for people coming out of boot camps are not very great they're all very generic and they don't often emphasize the person's skills as clearly and as much as i would like them to be there if you are interested in a cv review by the way you can click on the link below i do paid reviews which are discounted for the sake of the video and getting out there on youtube now back to your cv so in, it's important to understand as i've mentioned before it, learning to code is a great thing but learning to build and write a cv is an incredibly important skill that you will use for the rest of your life so it's important to double down on focus now some of the things i've spoken about before which you can see in this video is things that you should not have on your CV. It's one of the earlier videos that I've done for self-taught developers. I would say to you after this video, go and check that one out and also keep subscribed for obviously the CV series, which I'm continuing on probably the next video. In terms of your CV coming out of a bootcamp, obviously you don't have much relevant experience. So it's important to have some vital information. It's important to be focused. So when a recruiter sees it, they can clearly see what kind of roles you're applying for or the skills that you've currently got line up to the job that you've applied for. It's important to have a nice clear format so if they can easily see the information and take away from it. Stay away from things like color pictures and double columned CVs because it distracts away from vital information. It makes it hard to read. Remember to kiss, keep it simple, stupid. Again, stuff I've talked about in that video about things to not put on your CV or CV killers as I've labeled it. I will end this section with this bit of information. Now with your CV, if you are sending out 10, 20, 30, 40 applications and you get no responses, you need to stop. Stop sending out the same CV or resume thinking, why am I getting no applications? It must be them. It's not them, it's you, it's your CV. So 
after 15 or 10 to 15 applications, if you've got no responses, you really need to sit down and redo your CV and think, okay, what information am I not portraying correctly? Am I applying to jobs which fit my CV or do I need two CVs, one for front end, one for back end? Am I clear? Are my links working? Is my grammar correct? Look at your CV if you are getting no responses because quite often there is something went wrong with that. Now, the second thing is your portfolio. So as you're coming through your bootcamp, you will obviously start building things. And one of the first things you should build either through your bootcamp or at the end is a very basic website. Now, I've said this before, it doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to change the world. It doesn't have to make money. You can see that in this video somewhere here. What's very important is that you just start building an online presence. So it can go in your CV, someone can click on it, they can go to it and see uh, that you've got an online website. Again, very basic. Just think of it like an online CV, but obviously not a CV, it's a website with your skills and maybe a few links to some of your other projects. Now I can't tell you how impressed I am when I'm hiring people at the junior level, you know, to be that person now who's gone through a boot camp and is now progressed to actually hiring people who come through the self-taught developer route. It's an amazing feeling to see people who take this advice, who have a complete CV that's relevant to the role that we're, we've got out there, but then they've also got working links to a project, to a website. It doesn't have to be amazing. I'm impressed that you've just got something up there. It's so cool and as a starting point to not feel overwhelmed a basic website is all you need now obviously as your technical skills progress maybe the third fourth fifth month after the boot camp you need to keep up with those skills and you need to keep up with those projects it's important for you to keep building and building your online presence so then start stepping onto more advanced projects or more technically demanding projects again you don't have to go too deep don't overwhelm yourself but maybe something that integrates with a database it could just store some data and fetch some data it doesn't have to be visually amazing if it is then obviously that's a bonus point but your portfolio is a very important step because it's all about the proof in the pudding as I've said before in different videos it's about showing because you're from a self-taught background that you do have the skills that you're claiming to have because unfortunately without that degree it is a bit more about the proof it's about more more about what you can show you know it's all about being a shower not a grower number three let's talk about networking so there's two different types of networking there's online networking like linkedin and there's in-person networking like meetups etc where you can go and obviously face to face and meet people now to start with the face to face and meeting people a lot of people underestimate especially at the junior levels how vital this can be in landing you a first job now when you go to a meetup maybe you haven't been, one, been to one before but they are obviously attended by a lot of people like CTOs, senior developers, company managers, company owners like CEOs and also recruiters. Recruiters will rely on them heavily to network within the industry, keep themselves relevant and stay up to date with people and what's going on. Now think about it, why would you not want to go to a place which is full to the brim of the kind of people who you want to work with, who own the kind of companies where you want to work at, who hire for the kind of companies where you want to be. It doesn't make sense. You need to be there. Now, obviously it's a bit difficult if you struggle socially. However, what I will say to you is that I've never been to a meetup where I've not felt extremely welcomed and people have not gone out their way to speak to me. You also usually get fed like free pizza. Please. And if it's your thing, a lot of them have booze. Now, I started the UK's first junior developer meetup. We had our first event in Manchester this year. It was a roaring success. We all had a great time. There were three great talks. I've got another one coming up in the next six weeks, hopefully. So if you can, look out for one at junior level, but also attend the ones related to the roles that you're looking for. So if you're looking to be a front-end developer, you can obviously go to JavaScript meetups, React meetups, front-end development meetups, etc., etc. If you're more sort of back-end, you can look at back-end, Java, Node, Express, etc. There is a meetup for every technology that you can imagine. You can use the website meetup.com, which has a whole host of events which you can go to. And I highly suggest you do get to them and enjoy yourself. Have a great time. Let people see your personality because a lot of the times they will then recommend you for an internal job, which may come up. Imagine if they have a job at their company, they're looking for a junior developer or a graduate and they think, hey, actually I met so-and-so who at this meetup, they're a great person. I think they'd be a great culture fit. You know, let's bring them in for interview. You've done half the work. Now, the other side of things is the online networking like LinkedIn, a great, great place to be. There's a lot of professionals on there, but there's also a lot of people like myself who help people like juniors or aspiring developers promote themselves in tech. Now, having a fully set up LinkedIn profile allows you to get found in the search results. A lot of recruiters use it to search for people like software developers and software engineers. So it's worth going through the steps of having a great um, LinkedIn profile. There is lots of documents online. I'll try and find one. Um, or you can look at my LinkedIn, which I've got links in below. You can sort of look at my layout and how I've done things, but there's loads of documentation online about to have an all-star profile, I think they still call it. And that allows you to get found in the search results, as I mentioned, but also you can start posting about your daily occurrences, the things that you're working on, start building your network, commenting on other people's things, and people will start messaging you out the blue just to say, hey, I'd love your content, or hey, here's a resolution to a problem that you spoke about in a post. It's well worth maximizing both the online and in-person meetup to help you get that first job. The bonus is attending both these 
these two types of events will go with you throughout your career. I still do attend meetups and obviously do a lot online on LinkedIn. So I get job offers quite regularly. People reach out and headhunt, which is an amazing feeling. And it will be with you through the rest of your career. So I'll definitely recommend starting both and keeping up with both if you can. Again, it doesn't have to be overwhelming, start slow. Now here's some information about my journey. So when I did my first interview coming out of the boot camp, one thing that set me apart from everybody else was a project that I had. I built an app on iOS on or Swift, that as you may know it, the coding language for Apple and iOS. And what this app basically was, it was really stupid. You just shook it and it gave you like a picture of a type of food you could eat. So imagine you're out with your friends and you're arguing about, well, what should we eat? You shake it and it'd come up with like Italian food, fish and chips, Indian food or something crazy, right? It was ridiculous, it was stupid, but I absolutely loved it. I just thought of it and I thought I'm gonna build this because it gives me some skills and something to do. Now, everybody I was competing against at that interview had this, a similar background and a similar skill set, but what they didn't have was my project, my secret weapon that I'd been doing in my own time. Now, when I got into the interview, obviously what I did was show that off because I loved it. I thought it was hilarious and the interviewers loved it too. It showed some initiative. So I always put an emphasis on the project or portfolio that you build. Try and make something that's a little bit different, a bit quirky. I didn't say it has to be life-changing, but just something kind of cool. And what I started to do after that was I started to explore the industry. And what I then started to do was send out more applications and I started to tailor my CV based off the responses. If I was getting good responses, I'd change it a little bit just to see how that improved. And then what happened is I started to get invited to more interviews so obviously at the beginning I'd flunk a lot of them but what I started to do was record the questions I was being asked and I started to double down on my responses so as each interview went on my applications got me more interviews but then I started working on my responses to the questions what kind of questions was I being asked and how to answer them and where I ended up was actually sending out something like 10 applications getting six responses and getting four interviews which is a very high rate and then that started to go from there obviously as my experience grew but what I took from all that and what I still use today is what I learned from tailoring my CV, having it focused, my interview skills, which I've only grown and still get better because of experience. Now I've tried to keep this video very concise because I know it can be a very, very big topic to go on. And there's lots of ifs, ifs, buts, whys and maybes, which we can go forwards and backwards on all day long. However, I've covered the vital information that you need to get right. I've told you to focus down on your career path early on, just because it will be easy for you to then hopefully focus on one job or one set of jobs. I've told you to focus on your CV, make sure it's right, it's very important. You you may think it's right get another review down check out my reviews if you so wish you don't have to choose somebody else the importance of having a portfolio or a different kind of project it's huge it can make all the difference and number three networking online and offline is vitally important because you don't know when you're going to get recommended for a job or you don't know when you're going to make friends with the CTO of a great startup. Now I'd love to hear your opinions on this and obviously as always please like, subscribe and share because it goes a long way in helping me in the algorithm and if you do value this content let me know, let me know how your job hunt is going, I'll be responding in the comments.